So in this video, I want to talk about the immunosuppressive agents that we use to prevent transplant rejection. And here, they are categorized by that general mechanism of action. We discussed in a previous video that we can either just decrease T cell activation by inhibiting signal one, signal two, or the result of signal one and two, which is R2 production and its proliferating effect on the R2 receptor by just generally depleting T cell or even more general to just dampen the whole immune response. And this is within the others category. So let's start with the inhibitors of calcineurin, cyclosporin, and tacrolimus. They are famous for causing damage to the kidneys, so extremely nephrotoxic drugs. Always have to check serum creatinine. In addition, they are also neurotoxic and can even lead to seizures. Generally, by the mechanism of action, you can predict that they are going to lead to increased risk of infection, increased risk of malignancies, because you just have less T cell activation, so you're going to lack one part of the immune system, which is going to result in these side effects. So uh, if you inhibit the signal 2 with Belatacept, this is a pretty new drug, there's not too much data. Definitively watch out for an increased risk of malignancies. There's a black box warning for post-transplant lymphoproliferative disorders, so increased risk for developing lymphomas. So for the IL-2 receptor antibodies, there are mainly hypersensitivity reactions reported. The mTOR inhibitors, serolimus and everolimus, they can cause hyperlipidemia that actually occurs in a lot of the patients. And the mechanism behind this is that the mTOR inhibitors are supposed to inhibit lipoprotein lipase. Furthermore, the mTOR inhibitors cause bone marrow suppression. And the reason is that mTOR is not only involved in T cell proliferation, so other cells proliferation is also going to be inhibited. As a result of just slowing down the proliferation of several immune cells, you're going to have an increased risk of infection and increased risk of malignancies just by dampening the immune response in general. Then for the drugs that just generally deplete our T cells, there's one important side effect that both of them can cause. It's called the cytokine release syndrome, which is mainly that the patient feels very unpleasant, flu-like symptoms, and can develop fever. The idea is that before you're going to kill the cells, they're going to be activated. And the activation of the T cells is going to lead to enormous cytokine release. So within the other category, we're going to discuss glucocorticoids, and they obviously have a lot of side effects, which are commonly referred as Cushing syndrome. The name glucocorticoid already tells you that they're going to increase glucose, they're going to stimulate gluconeogenesis, so you have a higher incidence of diabetes or hyperglycemia. Then another fool that glucocorticoids are inducing are fatty acids, and therefore you're going to have weight gain. And in addition, glucocorticoids are famous for causing the central fat deposition. You're going to get a buffalo hump up and abdominal fat deposits. Glucocorticoids decrease the immune response, and therefore you're going to have an increased risk of infection. They have some very bad effects on the bone because they inhibit the osteoblasts, so the building of the bone is inhibited, and also they stimulate osteoclasts, so the chewing of the bone is stimulated. Therefore, there's an increased risk of developing osteoporosis. And also, some glucocorticoids have mineralocorticoid effects, so therefore, you're going to have fluid retention and edema. Azathioprine inhibits DNA synthesis and therefore inhibits proliferation of cells. So the cells that are affected are the most fast proliferating cells, like the GI cells and the bone marrow cells. You're going to get several GI adverse effects, nausea, vomiting, bone marrow suppression. Proliferation of immune cells is decreased, therefore increased risk of infection. Azathioprine is also toxic to the liver and can cause hypersensitivity reaction, and they normally show up as pancreatitis. So I want to finish up with some clues in terms of when to give which medication. And generally, we distinguish between induction therapy, this is an intense immunosuppression immediately post-transplantation, then the maintenance therapy, which is normally given to everybody that receives a transplantation to prevent rejection on a long term, kind of as a maintenance, so you're going to give this drug for decades. And then we can have the scenario of an acute rejection, so somebody is rejecting an organ. 
So which drug do we use for which scenario? So let's start with the most broad spectrum drugs, which we can use basically for anything. These are the glucocorticoids. We can use them for treatment of acute rejection for induction and maintenance therapy. Another drug class that we can use for acute rejection and induction, so high dose in the beginning after a transplantation, are the anti-CD3 antibodies and the anti-thymocyte globulin. In addition, now newly, the IL-2 receptor antibodies can be also used for induction therapy. All the other drugs that we discussed can be used on a long term for maintenance therapy, so to prevent rejection over the years. This concludes the video on the clinical pearls and adverse effects of immunosuppressive drugs.